Hermann Panwitz was born into a family of Prussian nobility on his father's estate, Bozanowitz. Today, Bozanov Ice, Silesia, near Rosenberg, today Olesno, which was situated on the German-Russian border at that time. His family originally hailed from the village of Panwitz in Lusatia, and from the 14th to the 16th century, they held the esteemed office of Burgraf of Glatz. At the age of 12, Panwitz enrolled in the Prussian cadet school in Wallstadt, near Liegnitz in Silesia, and later attended the main cadet school at Lichterfelde. His interest in military affairs was sparked even before the outbreak of World War I, as he was captivated by exhibitions showcasing Cossack units organized in neighboring towns of the Russian Empire. Upon the commencement of World War I, Panwitz eagerly joined the Imperial German Army as a volunteer, serving in the 1st Regiment of Lancers based at Milich. Despite his young age, he displayed remarkable bravery and was swiftly promoted to the rank of Lieutenant, 2nd Lieutenant Cornet. In recognition of his valor, he was awarded the Iron Cross Second Class, followed by the First Class a year later. After the war, he fought with the Volunteer Corps, Freikorps, against Polish separatists in Silesia and participated in the Kap Putsch. Accused of involvement in the murder of a social democrat, Bernhard Schottlender, in Breslau, Panwitz fled to Poland and assumed an alias. There he rose to prominence in the Black Reichswehr in 1923, where he was implicated in several FEMA murders. Following the failed Kustrin Putsch, he once again sought refuge in Poland, spending some time in Hungary before settling in Poland in 1926. In Poland, he worked as an administrator of farms, eventually overseeing the estates of Princess Radziwill in Moshuf, near Warsaw. In 1931, Panwitz returned to Germany following an amnesty. He became a Stabsführer of the SA in Silesia and later commanded an SA cavalry squadron in 1934. He played a significant role in the Room Purge in Silesia, cooperating with the Gestapo, which led to his admission into the Nazi party. Returning to the German army in 1935, he served as a Rittmeister, captain, and cavalry squadron commander. With the outbreak of World War II, he commanded the reconnaissance detachment of the 45th Infantry Division in Poland and France. Later, he was transferred to Austria following the Anschluss and served as a detachment commander with the 11th Cavalry Regiment near Vienna. Continuing his military career into World War II, Hermann Panwitz earned additional accolades for his leadership and valor. In September 1941, he was bestowed with the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross, having been previously awarded bars to his existing decorations. A year later, as an Oberst, Coronel, he received the Oak Leaves for his distinguished military command, particularly notable during the Battle of Stalingrad, where he led a battle group covering the southern flank. Ponwitz's most significant contribution during the war was the establishment of the Cossack Cavalry Brigade on April 21, 1943. This unit played a crucial role in conducting anti-partisan operations in Ukraine and Belarus before being deployed to combat Yugoslav partisans. However, under Panwitz's command, the Cossack regiments committed numerous atrocities against civilian populations in Serbia and Croatia, including mass rapes and summary executions. Straying beyond what he deemed acceptable, Panwitz issued strict orders on October 20, 1943, threatening the death penalty for such crimes. During an award ceremony in Berlin on January 15, 1943, Panwitz voiced his opposition to the Nazi policies that deemed Slavs as subhuman, untermenschen, for strategic reasons, directly confronting Hitler himself. As the war progressed, the Cossack formations under Panwitz's leadership were upgraded to become the 1st Cossack Division and 2nd Cossack Cavalry Division during the summer of 1944. Eventually, on February 25, 1945, these divisions were amalgamated into the Ifvind SS Cossack Cavalry Corps. Panwitz's popularity among his Cossack troops stemmed from his respect for them and his willingness to partake in Russian Orthodox services. Such gestures endeared him to the soldiers, 
and he was even elected Feldataman, the highest rank in the Cossack hierarchy traditionally reserved for the Tsar alone. However, as the war neared its end, the SS assumed control of all foreign units within the German forces. Despite his reluctance, Panwitz was discharged from the army in February 1945 and entered the SS as an SS Obergruppenführer and Lieutenant General of the waffen -SS. He initially resisted joining the SS, sitting his long-standing service in the army, but eventually acquiesced to Himmler's plans to integrate the Cossack units under his command into the Waffen SS. On May 11, 1945, Hermann Panwitz surrendered to British forces, specifically the 8th Army's V Corps, near Fulkermarkt in Carinthia, Austria. Recognizing the impending fate of his men, Panwitz sought to ensure that they would remain in the custody of the Western Allies. However, by mid-May, it became evident that the Cossacks would be handed over to the Soviet Union. Understanding the dire situation, Panwitz made the decision to accompany his men and share their fate. Despite being a German national and thus not subject to repatriation to the Soviet Union under the provisions of the Yalta Conference, he was nevertheless deprived of his command and placed under arrest on May 26. The forcible loading of the Cossacks into trucks commenced shortly thereafter and continued over the following days. Although some managed to escape from their camps in the aftermath of these actions, General von Panwitz and many of his German officers opted to surrender alongside the Cossacks to Soviet authorities at Judenburg. In doing so, Panwitz and his fellow German officers faced an uncertain future, willingly standing in solidarity with their Cossack comrades in the face of adversity. Hermann Panwitz met his end in Moscow on January 16, 1947, when he was executed following his conviction by a military tribunal for war crimes committed in the Soviet Union. Nearly 50 years later, on April 23, 1996, during Boris Yeltsin's presidency in Russia, members of the Panwitz family submitted a petition for the posthumous reversal of his 1946 conviction. The military high prosecutor in Moscow subsequently reviewed the case and determined that Panwitz qualified for rehabilitation as a victim of repression during the Stalin era. However, on June 28, 2001, the decision to rehabilitate Panwitz was reversed. A ruling was issued disputing the jurisdiction of the 1996 proceedings, and consequently, Panwitz's conviction for military crimes was reinstated. Despite efforts to challenge his conviction and seek posthumous justice, Panwitz's legal status remained unresolved, leaving a complex and contested legacy. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.